before we go ahead and try to bootstrapify our website, I'd like to spend this episode kind of looking at this code right here where, it where we added the required bootstrap and, and try to understand uh, what's going on because uh, that's kind of weird and we've got this assets directory here. It's, it's kind of a, a little confusing. So what I'd like uh, to, to do is, is talk about what's called the asset pipeline and the asset pipeline is designed that way because we have our what we might say preferred source uh, that we write our code in and it's it's easier to do it that way but it runs through some pipeline that gets processed in, into basically the br browser um, consumption uh, version and this may have a, an additional step in, in here and so what what this allows us to do is add various steps and and this can go on we can add multiple steps here and until eventually you get values for for all these and so what this allows you to do for instance is write in in SAS here and get it converted to CSS with, with our asset asset pipeline um, and it also allows us to do something like minimum uh, and compression and and other sources like that. If you've never heard of minification, what that is, and here's a Wikipedia article for, for that, is is the idea that if we go to our, our web server right here uh, and we access everything on on that web server there are a ton of different files that we're downloading and that's going to take a lot of time to to download and and so the, there are two things that we can do to to speed that up uh, the the first one in in minification right here so let's go up here uh, the first thing we can do is get down to a single source file so if we started with uh, a bunch of those files, we can concatenate them together so that they're, we're only downloading one file instead of downloading who, who knows how many files there are. And, and then the, the second thing that we can do is that we can eliminate, let's make that a read, eliminate um, white space. So the idea here is we, we like to put tabs and new line characters in so that we can actually read our source code, but that's extra characters that we send, and every character that we send is going to slow down our uh, network transmission. And so with minification, we can do these type of, of simple uh, processing steps that allow us to make the file as small a as possible. Uh, with with some other uh, languages, like with JavaScript, there there can be some other options. Uh, for instance, you can rename variables to be smaller characters rather than a nice readable value. You can try to do some optimizations that uh, uh, reduce unused or um, underutilized code and so forth. So minification can include a lot of things, but the, the single source file and the eliminating white, white space is pretty much generic to, to all of them. And so the, the asset pipeline lets us to write it really easy to, to read with, with whatever perform, preferred format we care about, transforms it to the, the version that the browser actually uses, does some more processing to make it uh, 
smaller and easy to send. We can easily even put it through compression to try to even reduce the size of our application even even further. And, and so the, the application pipeline allows us to do that. Now one of the nice things then is that we're going to put these in different spots. We're going to put this in our app assets directory. That's where these files belong. And then when, when we're in, in development, all of the asset pipeline is automatically dynamically generated. And so it t runs the asset pipeline for any of these assets that are requested and creates the proper files. Uh, but in production, that's a lot of extra time spent. And so usually we, we pre-compile our assets and we're going to put that in directly in the, the assets uh, or um, rather the, the public folder. Um, if you put anything in the public folder, then the web server says, oh, that is a really uh, nice I don't have to involve Ruby at all. I'm just going to take that file and say that that's the file that you want me to send. And so if these assets are unchanged, we can put them in our public files and, and then the web server can say, oh, there's this asset, there's this asset, and there's this CSS, there's this JavaScript, and just serve it without even checking with the web uh, framework to say, how do I convert it? Where does it go? How, how do I get it into the right format? And and you can uh, what you, what you can do then is is this whole part of the the asset pipeline can in in development is going to be dynamic in production it's going to be stuck in this public folder and then we can take advantage of uh, nice things like being able to cache these files because they, we, we've served them and we are really happy that uh, some other entity, whether it's the network, it's a content development, uh, content distribution network, it's a uh, web browser, it's an intermediate location between a uh, user and us, if they keep a copy of these files, then it's going to reduce the time even further to uh, deliver them to our client, uh, to, to whoever's browsing our website, because they're that much closer to, to our users. So um, it, that, that is why uh, we have the asset pipeline. It's very useful and, and is very important in order to have a high performance website. And, and so what we, we saw here, let's do one more color here, is for, for this preferred source right here, we, we saw this require and then some thing. It was either uh, require tree um, or require source depending upon if we were requiring. Let, let's look at that a little bit closer here. Uh, close that down. Right, we require the source file or we require a tree. And the difference is this just includes one file. This includes recursively all the files located in this, this directory here. So um, we, we're able to tell the asset pipeline directly um, in one file. These are the all the JavaScript files, or the are all the CSS files that are in going to be included in that single source, and so it can automatically combine them together and and do the the right stuff for for the pipeline. And so that is why those directives existed in our application.js, and uh, it knew to grab all the JS files. We don't do that with our CSS because Rails um, and SAS do some strange things, and that's why we we let SAS do all the combining together with with our 
import directive instead. So our, our other option in, in SAS is to use at import and this is preferred for our SAS because of variable scoping and between different files and so forth. So that's what the asset pipeline is. This is how we utilize it and this is why it's beneficial and gets used so frequently.